Welcome to the Witchy Work Wishes podcast, a place to find your weekly inspiration for bringing your personal witchcraft practice into your business, work, and office. Welcome to Witchy Work Wishes. I am your host, Charlene, and today we are jumping into the topic of mirror magic. But first, I like to start with some things I did over the weekend to help with my own personal practice. So the biggie, like biggie, 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 (laughs) was talking with my younger son about my practice. Kind of, kind of talking about it. Um, And yes, I chickened out just the same way I did with my older son and gave him a link to this podcast. I know, it's horrible, right? Uh, But it ended up okay. And he sent a message right away after listening saying he 100% supports me. So now both of my boys know about me being a little witchy. And this changes a bunch for me. I certainly care a lot about many things, uh, but nothing really matters uh, to me other than my two boys. So both of them are in college, you know, out of state now, and my empty nest home has become much more witchy in their absence. This past Yule and Christmas, I took a bunch of things down since family was going to be around, but you know, this coming year, I don't have to. It's all out there, and I could not be happier about it. So see, uh, I got a new book. I didn't actually get too far with it, but I did start one, um, and it's called The Complete Guide to Living by the Moon by Stephanie Galing. So while it is a book, like a a book book, there's reading throughout it, there are also work pages in it and journal prompts, so I'm really excited to to get more into it. The majority of my time this weekend was actually spent in my yard. I bought more tools, and man, does that make a difference. (laughs) I've been using a really, really old like weed eater um, and clippers. I um, went to Home Depot, got some new ones, and man, nothing like a new uh, piece of equipment. Um, it is really hot where I am. I, it's hot everywhere, right? So during the day, I kind of tended to my home and household chores, and then in the early evening, went outside and did the yard work. Even then, honestly, the early evening, it was still like 90 degrees. So I know many people love the summer, but I don't. I just patiently wait for fall to come. So let's see, I did a carpool on Sunday for my week ahead, going back to my faithful animal oracle deck, and I pulled the canary spirit. And if you have a deck like this, you know exactly how cheerful this card can be. Canary spirit says, sing your own song. Canary spirit arrives to help you find your authentic voice and express what is in your heart. Free yourself to experience your inner light and let it shine. As Canary Spirit sings to remind you of your inherent joy and to support you as you sing your own song. Now is the time to let the world know who you really are. Canary Spirit message is that you are free to be yourself and express your most cherished desires. The world wants to hear your song. So here we are once again on point, right? Oh my gosh, I love it. I just love this deck. Um, You know, and after talking with my younger son and him being so accepting of my practice too, I just feel like singing. I feel like being myself, just free to be. Okay, let's see, our moon this week, she is getting stronger. She is officially in a first quarter phase right now, all building up power for her big, huge full moon event next week. And if you were not able to join me uh, last week where I talked about Lunasa, take a breath in and walk through the steps with me real fast because there is a lot going on next week before I talk with you again. All right, so Tuesday, August 1st. Well, Tuesday is a fire element day. It's all about battles and tapping into our warrior side of things. It's Tyr's Day. Tyr is a Norse god of war, justice, and law. It's Mars Day. This planet is all about action and execution. It's about getting things done. Now, the 1st of August is also going to be a full moon, and it's going to be called a super sturgeon moon, and it brings the energy, you know, of manifestation, and it's going to be an intense time of abundance. So I'll mention it again at the end of the podcast, but there are going to be some great things we can plan to do next week for Lunasa. Um, What can we do for spellcasting on Tuesday the 1st of August? You know, it's a fire day, it's tears day, Mars day, and it will shine a beautiful, super sturgeon full moon. Well, Nanasa is a great time to craft and make your own besom. That is actually what I'm going to be doing. 
I'm going to have all my supplies ready over the weekend, and then I'll actually be making it on the first. So I don't know if I'm going to be making a full length one or a smaller handheld one, but one is being made either way. All right, I already have my notes, so while I am grabbing them, I have a quick ad, and then we'll head into Mirror Magic. Mirror Magic. What is it? Well, depending on what road your practice has taken you down, we might have different initial thoughts on what mirror magic is. I think by default, some of us are going to naturally turn towards the art of scrying, while others are going to think about portals, and then some of us might lean initially towards beauty magic and self-love. And you know what? We are all right. There are a bunch of ways to incorporate a mirror into our practice. But first, let's go back and look into the history of the mirror and witchcraft. All right, what do you think the very first mirror type element was? Mm, yep, you're right, it's water. <laughs> and the image our great ancestors saw when looking into a dark still pond or a body of water was the first look at ourselves and our own being. Now, way back when, were the images clear? Eh, not really. You know, movements of air made ripples on the water that distorted what we saw. The fact of it being a sunny day or a cloudy day changed things, so... I don't think we got a clear picture of what exactly we looked like until much, much later. So naturally, our early on self-perception was skewed a bit. Nonetheless, reflective surfaces were used for magic and have been used for magic for a long time. Once the 16th century came along, the very wealthy and really only the very wealthy had mirrors. Everyone else was still using you know, water reflections or maybe metal and brass reflections to get their own images. Now, Disney's first cartoon feature film, um, Snow White, has a famous mirror scene in it. Originally, this German story comes from the Brothers Grimm, which was published in 1812. But Walt Disney made it a household movie name in 1937, and it is still one of my favorites today. Uh, and even with today's modern world, honestly, I think we all know the words mirror, mirror on the wall. <laughs> but did you know the 1937 saying and words are this? The queen approaches her mirror, her magic mirror, and says, Slave in the magic mirror, come from the farthest space. Through wind and darkness, I summon thee. Speak, let me see thy face. The magic mirror replies, what wouldst thou know, my queen? The queen says, Mirror, mirror on the wall, Who is the fairest one of all? The magic mirror replies, Famed is thy beauty, majesty. But hold, a lovely maid I see. Rags cannot hide her gentle grace. Alas, she is more fair than thee. The queen replies, Alas for her, reveal her name. The magic mirror says, Lips red as the rose, hair black as ebony, skin white as snow. The queen says, Snow White. Much happens in the movie, and later the queen returns to her beloved mirror, believing Snow White to be dead, and again asks, Magic mirror on the wall, now who is the fairest one of all? Magic mirror replies, Over the seventh jeweled hills, beyond the seventh fall, in the cottage of the seven dwarves dwells Snow White, fairest one of all. The queen replies, Snow White lies dead in the forest. The huntsman has brought me proof. Behold, her heart. The magic mirror replies, uh, Snow White yet lives, the fairest in the land. It is the heart of a pig you hold in your hand. The queen replies, The heart of a pig? Then I have been tricked. The big takeaway over the years has been mirror, mirror on the wall. All right, so what are the things, other things we've heard over the years with mirrors, right? We know one or two that have either been handed down in our families or that we've heard other people say. So certainly, if you break a mirror, you have seven years bad luck, right? Or maybe the opposite. If you drop a mirror and it does not break, you'll have good luck. I think you can, or it's said you can chant Bloody Mary into a mirror to bring ghosts forward. I believe there was a movie a while back where you can say Candyman three times into the mirror, um, and that's going to bring evil forces out. So 
I think some people also believe in the mirror and weddings and that newlyweds should look together into a mirror for their future. So I know there are more, but honestly, what triggered me to start looking into this for both my home use and office use was certainly to add another level of workings into my personal practice. But I also wanted to understand a couple things that have happened to me over the years with mirrors. So I really wanted to bring in a guest speaker for this topic who is well-versed on the areas of mirror magic, but I just could not get the spot confirmed. So I'm giving it a go myself. Be patient. Hopefully I do I do this episode right. So I have mirror magic broken down into four areas for our practice. Really, uh, portal and other realms is first. Second, I've got scrying. Third, beauty and self-love. And fourth, I've got protection, deflection, and banishing spells. So the two of those that I have personal experience with are going to be portals and other realms, and also beauty and self-love magic. So I have never used a mirror for scrying, nor for protection or deflection. So let's start with the portals and other realms. You know, I mentioned in one of last year's episodes that I traveled to Chicago in the fall of 22 for one of my older son's football games. He picked me up from the airport and we drove to my hotel uh, by his college. The minute we pulled up, literally the minute I knew something was off, I even said something verbally out loud to him that I don't have a good feeling about this place. It was late and we had a big day coming up, so I just went with it. I checked in and settled down into my room. It happened to be a full moon weekend and a very, very stormy weekend. I brought my moonstone crystals with me and placed them and some other crystals around the room. I was pleased, very pleased, to wake up the next morning with a completely uneventful night. So I naturally thought my senses were off. So the day went on, and I had lots of fun visiting with old friends and hanging out. And then we all went to Taylor's game that night. I went back to my hotel room um, and got ready for bed and quickly fell asleep. I was exhausted. In the middle of the night, of the full moon night, it happened. I knew right when I was abruptly woken up what was going on too. It was just like what happened night after night when I was little. I opened my eyes and I saw the misty, transparent, almost cloud-like things flying around my room. And I was scared. And when I say it's been years since something like this has happened to me, I mean years, like 40 years, over 40 years. I was scared uh, by it when I was a little girl, so my initial sense was to be scared again as an adult. But with age comes wisdom and knowledge, and I took a deep breath that night last fall, and decided I would embrace it instead of feeling fearful. So I did. I watched them fly and swirl around the room for what seemed like the whole night, although I know it wasn't. Uh, There were many images. It wasn't just one. Sometimes they came very close to me and hovered above my face. Mostly they were just floating around the room. I even reached out at one point to an image that stayed with me for a while. It was right there with me. And as I reached my hands out to touch it, my fingers went through it like like touching a cloud. So the room was silent, literally no noise, just the images I saw floating around and flying. I stayed awake. How could I not? (laughs) What an amazing experience, especially since this time I enjoyed it instead of being completely scared of it. But I stayed awake until they started to leave. And guess where they left? Hmm? Through the mirror in the room. I watched it happen. I had one more night in the hotel room, and on the third night, it was quiet, just like the first. But I knew that mirror on the stormy night of the full moon was a portal for spirits to visit me, just like they had when I was little. So I do have another experience, but eh, I'm a little reluctant to share the full details, so I'm going to kind of gloss over it. (laughs) So It was uh, back in December of 21, which was a very hard year for me and my family. After months of struggling with the attack, I honestly just tanked, and I hit such a low point in my life. And back on that dark December day, I sat at my vanity and just stared at myself in the mirror. I almost got lost in my own image. After many minutes went by, I left. Like, left. I floated above my physical body and looked down at myself. I wish I could tell you I was drinking or under the influence of something but I wasn't. I was just done, and to feel the separation from my physical body and look down on it like I was no longer attached or part of it is something I will never forget. Now, when I came back down, I was confused, but kind of numb. What just happened? 
Um, I looked at myself again in the mirror, but felt very little. Now, I know mirrors reflect our reality, right? So it makes sense that I experienced something as I did with the space that I was in. I don't know what realm I was taken to. I certainly didn't go very far, but I was definitely out of my body looking down at myself who was still looking into the mirror. It's hard to drag yourself out of a dark place, you know, but I have, you know, sometimes looking at yourself at your lowest point is the best thing that can happen. I've spent the last two years sorting through things and focusing on health, both physically, mentally, and spiritually, but that experience haunts me. To my core, it haunts me. And I think about it often. I sit in front of this mirror each morning. It's my vanity mirror. And I know with all of my heart, this mirror has power. So two very, very personal things. Thank you for staying with me on those two. <laughs> so what makes a mirror a portal for us to use in our craft? Well, not all mirrors are portals, or I personally don't think so. Uh, the act of it physically being a mirror does not mean spirits will have access to it, right? I do think we are in tune with our senses, or if we are in tune with our senses, we'll have some signs that we can reference that would suggest maybe a portal exists. First and foremost, trust your gut. If you feel something, something is there. Maybe your cat is especially drawn to a mirror in your house or other pets that you have. Uh, you know, our animals pick up on stuff that we don't, or we can't. Uh, maybe we're not open to it, but they they know and sense a lot more. Uh, maybe you yourself are drawn to a mirror for no good reason. You just keep coming back to it. Uh, maybe, you know, you could have um, a room with a mirror in it that has a lot of things happen. You know, it just keeps happening around this mirror. Uh, that could be a sign, especially if it's a consistent room of activity. Uh, third is a temperature swings by your mirror. This one really is a physical act that you can test. You know, if the airspace around your mirror is that you suspect as being like a portal um, is warmer or colder than the rest of your room, it could be a sign. Okay, the second one I have is scrying. Now, I have not personally used a mirror for scrying, but mirrors for it are heavily used in our practice. So this is called catoptromancy. I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, maybe even entoptromancy. A simple explanation is looking into a mirror to get your message or vision. Now back to Snow White, the evil queen is crying when she looks into the mirror and asks the question, who is the fairest one of all? Of course, anyone can grab a mirror and ask a question, right? And for any random inexperienced person, getting a response or an answer is highly unlikely. It's going to be the discipline in our practice, the mindset we get physically, emotionally, and spiritually in, while working with a mirror that will determine the response that we get, you know, and how deep it is. So I have seen some will use a black mirror to do their scrying. So you won't have that typical crystal clear mirror reflection of self, you know, to possibly distract you. You see yourself, but it's, it's not the same. So third is beauty and self-love. This one I have not only done, but continue to do on a daily basis. I have one main spot that holds all of my witchy supplies, but... I don't do a lot of specific witchcraft on it. I tend to do a lot of my workings either in my kitchen or by my fireplace in my living room. Uh, so mainly my vanity, which I get ready at each morning, is another space for me to remind me of what I've done over the weekend or the workings. So if and when I do card pulls, I have the card of my vanity so I can look at it each day. I definitely practice self-love here. I tend to hair and face and nurture it with oils and lotions course, do my makeup here and add to the natural beauty I try, <laughs> try to bring forward um, and enhance things the best I can. And the vanity itself is surrounded by crafts and gifts the boys have um, done and made over the years. So it's very much a me space. So what can we do with mirror magic and beauty? You might hear this one called glamour magic. And basically, we are going to harness the power within ourselves to fuel and manifest our desires. This tradition goes way back in many cultures. We can read stories about Isis, who is an Egyptian goddess who used glamour magic. In Greek mythology, we hear about Aphrodite using her glamour magic, as well as her son Cupid. The Celtic goddess Morgan used it, and so on and so on and so on. It's all about one thing, basically, harnessing our own personal power. With beauty and glamour magic, we can pull from tools using you know, makeup, fashion, accessories like jewelry, lots of different stuff, and of course, health and our own physical well-being. So last I have protection and deflection. 
um, and maybe some banishing. Now again, this is an area of mirror magic that I have not personally used for myself, but I do plan to. Mirrors can be used in protection spells. They can be used to send or reflect curses back to the sender. They can be used for binding spells, and they can be used for defensive spells. Think of the reflection and you know, the power it holds. We can use this energy to amplify our spells too. Have you ever tried to set something on fire by angling a mirror and shining the rays of the sun on it, you know, directly on it? I'm not suggesting you do that, but if, you, if you've done it, you know what it is. It's powerful. And you can harness that same power and energy by directing it into a very specific place and a spell. So same thing with the moon. And while you won't be catching anything on fire with it, <laughs> you certainly can harness the powerful full, full moon energy with your mirror and use it in your spell work. Now, you can also charge your mirrors in the sun or moonlight, depending on what energy you are looking to work with. So mirror magic is amazing and very powerful. It can be complicated though, right? I think being ready for the journey is a big part of it. Getting yourself into a state of mind that will allow the energy to shift and gain strength. Sometimes we're, we're not ready to hear or see or understand the truth, especially when it's about ourselves. So the timing is important. No matter how you plan on working with a mirror and using it in your craft, be, be careful. Protect yourself before starting any workings and be respectful. Mirror magic is an amazing tool in our craft. All right, well, I did write a poem for today's podcast. I have it here. So let's switch over to that. Um, I was going to start reading my poem and then thought I completely skipped over Mirror Magic for the Office. See? Oh my goodness. I get on a monologue and treat this like my own personal therapy session, <laughs> and I totally forget the whole reason for this podcast, which is bridging the gap between the corporate working world and the personal world with our witchcraft practice. So let's backtrack before I do the poem and talk about uh, Mirror Magic for our work. All right, portals and other realms. You know, there certainly could be an energy in the office that is being generated by other things. Whatever we want to call these other things, spirits, our ancestors, ghosts, fae, fairies, gods and goddesses. If you think energy is coming into your office through a portal like a mirror, you have some options. First, do you like the energy? If it's good and you want to keep it going, you may want to just let things be. If it's bad and you would like to stop or close the mirror portal, then you'll need to take some specific steps. Again, you know your office and what the vibe is in it, so you may need to tweak things a little bit accordingly to make that happen. Um, if you are not sure that an office portal exists, and it does not need to specifically be from a mirror, um, but you can take a pendulum to confirm. And of course, ask if this specific spot is a portal. Now, I am not a pendulum expert by any means, but I believe if your pendulum sw uh, swings clockwise, this is an entry port. If it swings counterclockwise, it's an exit port. Don't believe we want to close exit ports down, otherwise things will get trapped in our space. So again, for an entry portal, what type of things are coming through to your office? Are they bringing good business energy and success type, um, type vibes or, or not? And then move forward from there. All right, second scrying, you know, I can see this being pretty useful, especially in an office setting. There is a lot going on during the workday, and to take a moment and ask a question, uh, especially about something you need guidance for on your job, would be helpful. I don't know if you'll be able to get in the right mindset with a you know, two-minute break, but I would work with this one some more. I, I, again, I haven't done scrying myself, but I can see this being pretty useful for, for work. I think there could be some good outcomes for scrying with a mirror at the office. All right, third, beauty and self-love. Oh yeah, at work? Yes, please. Every time you pass a mirror, look at yourself. Give yourself a little pep talk. Nervous about the meeting at 1030? Go into the bathroom and take a moment. Look right into your own eyes and tell yourself you can do it. Give yourself praise. Give yourself encouragement. Give yourself love. This is not a vain act. I know mirrors and vanity are closely associated, but that is not what we are doing. We are, we are loving ourselves and each and every flaw that we may have. So take a quick time out to freshen up 
or straighten your charmed necklace. Uh, grab your rollerball of essential oils or perfume or cologne and redo the sigil you put on your body before you left this morning. Look in the mirror as you draw it out again. Call its energy. Empower yourself every day at the office. Practice self-love and glamour magic. Yes, please. All right, last, uh, protection, deflection, and banishing. You know, again, for the office, this could be amazing. The corporate world can be unpredictable at times, and there is a bunch of shared energy that is hard to dictate or control. There is drama that is unavoidable at times, and there is work and stress that can pile up when we least expect it. So use mirror magic to protect yourself. Mirrors can duplicate energy, so be careful what you're doing around them. You don't want to you don't want that extra work from a slacking coworker to be duplicated upon you. <laughs> so deflection here would be good. Um, on the other hand, if you are inviting more wealth and more success, duplicate away, right? <laughs> uh, for banishing, it could be it could work in the corporate world. You may want to banish an actual position or person or project. You know, banishing reflections may not work with all of that, but you certainly will be able to use it for some. In essence, you want to reflect the unwanted thing or things back to where they came from. Okay, that was quick, but at least, <laughs> at least I remembered to do it. Oh my gosh, the sole purpose of this podcast is to do office stuff. So I apologize for that. So back over to the poem, since I grew up on Disney and my favorite movie um, with it is Snow White, I just have to start with the words, magic mirror on the wall. So here we go. Magic mirror on the wall. Spirits far and near I call. As I gaze and look within, reveal the truth of what has been. The portal door I open and allow, spirits to come and see me now. I'll travel to your time and place, and this new realm I shall embrace. For those who seek to do me harm, reflect their curse and be my charm. Protect me from their evil ways as the mighty mirror shield I raise. Take my tears and take my sorrow. With you, my beauty comes tomorrow. Stay with me for years to come. Help me please from going numb. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Magic mirror, who sees all. As I gaze and look within, my witchy powers so begin. Well, that is all I have for you this week. Don't forget Lunasa on the 1st. Uh, remember, Tuesday, August 1st is a fire day. It's Tears Day, Mars Day, and will shine a beautiful, super sturgeon full moon. There is big energy that can be worked with on Tuesday the 1st. What you want to do and how much energy you want to work with, that's up to you. As I said before, the beauty of our practice is how individual and unique it is. The fact that Lunasa is all about abundance, though, and, you know, the power of the sun and celebrating our harvest uh, season beginning. And it falls on the day of a week that is also about power achievement, initiation, courage, passion, confidence, and production. That also has the same colors as Lunasa, red, orange, yellow, the same element, fire, and a full moon. Ah! Have at it. Go for it. Make this coming Lunasa Tuesday, August 1st, a witchy day and go for it. Thank you so much for joining me today. So next week's podcast is all about witchcraft and cats. Now, this is one I've been very excited to start. And I know I'm going to be talking to a bunch of witchy people who have cats. Um, they sure do go hand in hand, don't they? <laughs> but I have a bunch of good stuff myself pulled for that episode, episode, excuse me, especially diving into cat claws, you know, the ones that shut off, and cat whiskers, and how we can use them in our spells and practice. So till then, I hope you have a great rest of your week and weekend. And I'll talk with you next week. Thank you for joining me today at Witchy Work Wishes, a place to find your weekly inspiration for bringing your personal witchcraft practice into your business, work, and office. For more information and additional content, please visit me online at witchyworkwishes.com. If you want to send me a personal note, please email me at info at witchyworkwishes.com. And of course, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Just search for Witchy Work Wishes. <laughs>